Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the new Live Gradient tool that's found in newer versions of GIMP. So this is GIMP 2.9.8 but this is going to be a feature found in GIMP 2.10 and in my opinion it's a really awesome feature. Some of you guys have seen me use it in some other tutorials uh, but today I'm going to do an in-depth look at this tool because it is a really awesome tool and it's a great upgrade from previous gradient tools. But before I get into that, of course, I want to show you guys my website, daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials. We've got tons of video and text tutorials on here, all on GIMP, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in our GIMP photo editing course on Udemy from beginner to pro photo retoucher. I'll include a link to this in our description as well as links to our social media accounts and our Patreon page. But I'll go ahead and get started here by creating a new document. So I'll go to File, New, and I'm just going to create this at 1280 by 720 and it doesn't really matter what uh, composition size you guys use for this because we're not printing it out or anything. But I'll start today by showing you guys the old version for creating custom gradients and this is still an effective way to create custom gradients. You can use this for example in GIMP version 2.8 still so if you're still using that version you can go ahead and try this method. It's still an effective way to create a custom gradient. But you'll start by going to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, Palettes, but here you'll have a bunch of palette options and you can click on one of them, right click and go to edit palette and this brings up your palette editor. I'm going to go ahead and close this tab out and I just clicked on this drop down here to close it out. And let's say I wanted to create a new custom gradient from a color palette. Well what I can do is go ahead and come down here and click create a new palette and I'll just name this Davies Media Design because I'm going to use some of my colors. And then come over here and you'll see this button says create a new entry from the foreground color. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you have your color selected over here with what you want to add to the palette. I'm only going to do a couple colors on here. And I'm going to start by choosing the Davies Media Design Blue here. So I'll click OK. And now come over to that icon and go ahead and click to create a new entry. And you'll see this line show up. And uh, this first box here is the only color that's in the palette and this will fill out as you add colors to it. And I don't know if you guys noticed from the other palette that I had, I'll go back to edit palette. You can see there's four lines here and then the fourth line just has black where there's no color palettes here. So I'm going to go back to my Davies Media Design custom palette that I was editing. So you can actually right click on this palette and you can choose edit color or you know, change the color from the background or the foreground or you can delete the color entirely. But what we're going to do is go ahead and come over to our foreground color and I just want to add a darker version of this so I'll just drag the value to the left and that's just going to add some black in there and then I'll click OK. And so now that that's our foreground color I'm going to click the create a new entry from the foreground color icon and you'll see that color pops up here. And so now we have two colors in here and uh, this is our new color palette. So I'll come back over to my palettes tab and we'll go ahead and right click and in the new version of GIMP you've got the palette to gradient option built directly in here. So I'll go ahead and click that and down here in my gradient stock you'll see our new custom gradient and by the way if you don't have this open I'll go ahead and come over here to close tab. Let's say you don't have this open just go to windows, dockable dialogs and then gradients and it may pop up up here but you can just click and drag this down here. And part of this being a dockable dialog means that you can click and drag this and uh, put it wherever you want basically. So I can click and drag this on its own. I can bring it over here if I really want to or I can bring it back here which is the sort of standard location for this. So now we've got our Davies Media Design custom gradient that we've created here. And so now what I can do is come over to my gradient tool and in old versions this is still the same thing. You can just click and drag to create the gradient. I'm going to show you what the main difference is here between the new versions. So when I click and drag this custom gradient that I've created, which by the way it shows up right here, uh, instead of this just drawing a flat gradient and that's it, and you either just like it the way it is or you have to redraw it. Now with the live edit gradient feature what I can do is drag um, this plus sign here or this plus sign here and this is called the start endpoint and this is the end endpoint and I can drag these endpoints to wherever I want now and so this is why it's called the live edit because I can edit it live directly here on the screen. So this is what's changed about uh, the new versions of GIP and I think this is a great feature personally. So I'll show you guys some features here of the live edit gradient tool. So if I come over here and click on the start endpoint 
You'll notice I have a dialog box that pops up right here and it's labeled start endpoint. There's also an X and Y value box here and what this allows me to do is go ahead and choose the exact location where I want to position this start endpoint. And so if I type in 50 and 20 for the X and Y values and hit enter, you'll see that this adjusts so that it is now located at 50 for the X and 20 for the Y uh, in terms of pixels and you can see the ruler right here or you can just hover over it and see uh, your numbers down here. But you can also change this unit to percent. So if you want it to be on a certain percentage of the image or inches, millimeters, etc., you can change the units there. You can also change your color of your start endpoint. And so right now we've got that DMD blue that we, or that Davies Media Design blue that we selected earlier. But if I really wanted to change this, I can just click and drag. And you'll see that this gradient updates automatically while I do that. So I'll click OK. And now we've got a new color here for our live gradient. And also you'll notice that under gradient, instead of being called Davies Media Design, now this is set to custom. You can also change the color value to the fixed value that comes with the gradient, or you can change it to the foreground color you currently have selected. You could change it to transparency if you want, and you could change it to the background color, or you can change it again to transparency. Now the endpoint works the same way. The only difference is this is where the gradient ends. So you can do all the things I just showed you with changing the X and Y value, changing the color, changing the units on the X and Y value, etc. But uh, one feature of the start and endpoints is you can flip the color. So if I come over here and I click reverse, it just goes ahead and flips the colors of our start and end endpoints. You can also change the shape of the gradient while you're working on it. So I can change this to bilinear, for example, or radial. Um, and that's just going to, you can't really see the difference right now, but if I drag the start endpoint out to the middle, you'll see it's a radial gradient where the gradient starts from the center and comes out in the shape of a circle. And then of course you've got all these other ones, so you've got a square gradient, conical, and just kind of the usual gradients that come with GIMP. Uh, but just know that you can change the shape of your gradient after you've drawn it versus having to change the shape first and then draw it. You can also click and drag this offset, which basically just changes where the start endpoint and end endpoint colors start and begin. Um, this is something I'm going to show you guys in a second that you can also do with uh, another feature. But if you do want to change, for example, on the linear gradient where that starting color uh, starts to fade into the end color, you can go ahead and adjust this offset value here by clicking and dragging the slider. You'll see here that by default the dithering option is checked. Dithering basically fills in the colors in a uh, low color image. Like in this case, we've got a lot of colors going from uh, one end of the gradient to the other. So it kind of fills in the colors with pixels to, to make it appear as if there are more colors to the human eye. So that's just kind of a default setting you want to have checked there. Um, it's not really something you're going to notice, but uh, just keep that checked. And adaptive super sampling uh, has to deal with the way that GIMP explains it is when one color is transitioning to another color sharply, there's kind of a jagged effect between the edges of where the colors are meeting. And so adaptive super sampling kind of smooths out that jaggedness when the colors are transitioning. So it's not a super common thing, but uh, just know that it's there and feel free to look more into that uh, if you're curious about that. But we're going to go ahead and bring our start endpoint back to the top here and I just want to demonstrate a few more things with this live edit gradient tool. And so you'll notice that there's a dot right here in the middle between where the start and the end endpoints are. And so this middle is called the midpoint. You can see it up here when you click on it, it brings up a dialog box just like it does um, for the start and end endpoints. So when I click on this, you'll notice that the position here changes. So this is our position value. If you set it to 50, that means it's directly in the middle of our start and end endpoints. And sorry, I know it's confusing hearing start and end endpoint, but that's just the official name here. So this is our starting point, we can call it. And this is our ending point. You'll notice that when I move this off center here, uh, this option here becomes active. And so basically right here, you, you'll see it's called center midpoint. And what this is doing is it's basically aligning your midpoint here to the center in between your start and your end points. So if I click on that, you'll notice that this dot here jumps back into the middle. And so that's just a good way if you guys are messing with this to get that back to center. You can also change the blending mode and that's the way that your start color blends with the end color. And you can also change the coloring mode of the actual gradient. So right now it's set to the standard RGB, but you can change it to HSV counterclockwise hue or HSV clockwise hue. That's just kind of the direction of the hue saturation value that the gradient's going in. And by the way, that's what HSV stands for, is hue saturation value. 
So there's also an icon here that says new stop at midpoint. And I'm gonna show you guys what a stop is here. Uh, if I click on this, you'll see that now the midpoint one designation is changed to stop one. And basically what a stop is, is it's another point on the gradient line. So this is our gradient line where basically uh, you can have a new color. So uh, in this case, you'll see that this starts with a left color and a right color, but there's a chain icon here. And you guys have seen this chain icon before in other tools. And what this does is basically when I change just one of these colors, it's gonna add that change to both colors. So if I change this left color to white, you'll see the left and right color are changed to white. And so now on each side of this stop here or this point on the line is basically white. So it's going from our start color, which is that blue, to our midpoint color, which is the white. And then on the other side is still white. And then it's fading back into our darker blue for our end color. So the cool thing about this is I can uncheck this chain icon or I can unlock this chain icon and I can change the right color to a totally different color. So let's say I want to do like a gray or a, let's go with the red just because it's a little bit more striking. If I click OK, now you'll see that there is a line where our left color and our right color meet. So instead of this fading from light blue to white, still white to dark blue, now it goes from light blue to red and then there's a hard stop and then there is white and then there is a dark blue. Now one quick thing here, you'll notice that my uh, left color is on the right side and my right color is on the left side and that's because I still have my reverse check. So I'm gonna uncheck that and now this makes a little bit more sense where our left color is on the left side and the right color is on the right side. So you'll notice that now that this is called stop one, it's no longer the midpoint and so you guys might be asking what happened to the midpoint? Well, when I hover over, um, the line here in between our starting point and this new stop, you'll see a little dot appears right here. And so when I click on that, that's actually the new midpoint one. And then again, when I come over here between the stop and the end point, you'll see that there's another dot right here. If I click on that, that's midpoint two. And so just like our original uh, midpoint, we can adjust the position either up here. So if I want this to be at 40, I can change that to 40. I can change the blending mode. So I can change this to curved if I want. Um, or any of these blending modes here. I'm just gonna set this to linear. And I can also convert this into another stop if I want, or I can click the center midpoint and that's gonna center that between our uh, starting and our uh, first stop here. And I can do the same here, so just center that. So you guys will notice that when I hover my mouse over this gradient line, my uh, mouse pointer, which right now has the gradient icon on it, will also have a plus sign above that gradient icon. So. That's basically saying that I can add a stop uh, at any point on this line. So if I click, you'll see a new stop is created here. And you'll also see that this is now called stop one. And if I click on here, this is called stop two. And if I click and create another one here, this is now stop three. And each one of these has a left and right color. And so I can change this. And if I change this with the icon still linked, it's going to fade from our dark blue here to our light blue to our white. But I can do what I did here where there's a hard line here and I can do that by just again unchecking this link here and changing the left color to something different. So let's say I wanted it to go with like a pinkish purple. Click OK. So now this goes from our dark blue to that pink and then there's that hard line and then on the other side is that blue here. So um, anytime you uncheck this chain link here, it's allowing that left and right color to be different which is going to create a hard line. Otherwise it's just going to be that fading effect. And again, if I move my starting point, it's just going to move the entire gradient on our canvas here. And so keep that in mind that you can still uh, click and move this around even when you've created those stops. So you also notice that after I've created all these new stops that each stop now has a new midpoint in the center here. And so you'll see if I hover over between each segment here in between the stops, they've all got a uh, midpoint here, which you can always just realign that to the center just like we did before. And just like before, we can also change the shape of this. So if we want it to be radial, we can go ahead and select radial and this will add uh, curvature to our gradient. And you'll see that it curves right at the stops. And we can also change this to square and you'll see that it creates square shapes uh, around these stops here where the colors are changing. And if you just select different uh, shape types, you'll see it just starts to do interesting things here. And I've selected uh, the dimpled shape here, and this has actually created a really cool square shape. So I'll go back to linear here, and you'll also notice that there's a repeat option here, and 
Right now, if I drag this gradient down, it'll just basically start with our starting color until that start point, and then it'll gradually turn into the uh, first stop here. But if I come over here to repeat, uh, basically what this is doing is it's uh, circulating our gradient so that it just comes back around to the other side of the canvas. Um, so if I drag this all the way down, you'll see that the colors start to repeat. And you can change the different types of repeating. So we've got triangle wave, sawtooth wave. And so truncate, it looks like it's just an empty canvas and then it starts with your gradient versus uh, starting with your first gradient color here. So go back to none, bring this back to the top. All right, so let's say now we wanna save our gradient. We've uh, done all this work here and we just wanna make sure that we can use this again at another time. So I found that the easiest way to save this gradient is to right click on it and go to duplicate gradient and that creates a copy here. And then when you click on this in the gradients panel uh, or the gradient stock, you'll come up here and you'll see something called the gradient editor. And up here you can change the name of it. So we'll just name this DMD tutorial gradient and click enter. And now over here in our gradients panel, we've got the new name of our gradient. But you can also adjust this in the gradient editor. And you'll see that when I click and drag this black triangle here, uh, it's dragging our stop. And so this black triangle is the stop and this white triangle is our midpoint. And so you can drag these around until you get the setting you want. And then these changes are going to be uh, saved to our new gradient. So if I come and click on another gradient and then come back and click on this one, you'll see our settings are the same. So once you've made all the changes to your gradient, just grab another tool. I tend to grab the move tool and that'll go ahead and apply that gradient. And once that gradient's applied, you can no longer live edit it. So just make sure that your gradient is good to go before you uh, go ahead and apply the gradient. But here it is here. But I just wanna test that we properly saved our gradient. So I'll go to control Z and undo that gradient. And then I'll come over here to our uh, gradient. We created the DMD tutorial gradient grab our gradient tool, and if I just click and drag this, you'll see that it now draws that custom gradient that we created. If you come over here to the blend or the gradient tool options, uh, you can click on here, and you can choose from some pre-selected gradients or some gradients that came with GIMP by default. So we've got some gold here, and we've got uh, pastel rainbow and some other stuff. You can also, of course, adjust the opacity of this gradient. And then you can also change the mode of the gradient, and this is basically the same as a layer mode, so uh, this will just do different things depending on what mode you're selected on. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. You can also visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials, or enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy, and I'll include a link to that in the description as well as links to our social media accounts. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.